All right, are we rolling? Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to The Hot Mess, which is me, Jake and Zara, also known as Plant Gay for Life. As you can see, it is nighttime, so the lighting's a little bit different. In my world, it is Sunday evening, so the last day of the Equigenera pop-up weekend. That was the first time that they came to Manhattan. Long overdue, I gotta say, there's a lot of plant people in Manhattan and in the five boroughs, and Equigenera, we're glad you came. So, I have a lot of plants that I got that I wanna show you guys as we go through this video, but the way we're gonna go through this video is I'm gonna insert some B-roll of my time there a little bit, kinda as I'm talking, because here's the thing, guys. When I search the address for this location, this pop-up, if you will, and I found out that it's literally a 15-minute walk from where I live, <laughs> I went every single day. <laughs> yeah, that's how gross I am, but I love it. So, yes, and I found some really cool stuff. So I guess I'll just get into uh, my experience there when I got there. So I got there maybe a little after they opened, around 10 a.m. on Friday morning. There was a line outside, so there were people looking to get in. They had a bouncer, and she was telling people, you know, you can come in, and, and when you come in, just hang out in the front of the store until the back kind of clears up. Because it was a small store. It, th this this pop-up, it was in this kind of, it looked like an abandoned <laughs> Chinese restaurant. <laughs> so I don't know what it was, but it could have been, you know, it's just some empty you know, little, little tiny area. It might have been a little bit bigger than my studio apartment. So it was very small, but there were a lot of plants in there. I was surprised how many plants they were able to cram into that space. And when you have maybe up to 50 people in that tiny space, there was a lot of, oh, excuse me, sorry, sorry, as people are like trying to grab plants and aggressively shopping. You know what I'm talking about? They're like, or like, no, competitive shopping. Don't get me wrong, it was a little aggressive, but yeah, competitive shopping for sure, because we're plant people, we're friendly, but we're also like, you know, oh, what a pretty plant, and we're like, we're trying to get everything before somebody else does, you know what I'm saying? So anyone who's been to these Equigenera pop-ups, Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this particular pop-up, there were two sides of the store. There was one side where it was all bagged imports from Ecuador, and then there was the other part of the store that had all potted plants directly from Florida. So if you don't know, Equigenera has two locations. They have a location in Ecuador, and then they have a location in Florida. So when you order online from Florida, it usually will come to within about a week or so. When you order from Equigenera, they ship out once a month, as far as I know. So usually it will take a few weeks for the phytosanitary and everything to go through. I think when I did Equigenera, the Ecuador location, when I did imports online, I think shipping was like 20 bucks. Depending on when you watch this, that might have changed, so I don't know. But personally, I don't find, at least in my experience from the handful of imports that I've done from both, I don't find one to be better or worse than the other. I find that the failure and success rate of plants coming to you either really good or with root rot or rehabbing, it's, it's kind of the same. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. Right off the bat, philodendron are not good shippers. They do not ship very well at all. And a lot of the philodendrons that were in the bags, the ones that have been probably flown in, I guess to Florida, and then they got their trucks loaded up and they came up to New York City. One of the many reasons why I prefer anthuriums over philodendron is because they ship really well. That is a huge reason why I love to get imported anthuriums. So yeah, I got there about 10 o'clock or so, a little bit after they opened. It was packed, it was popping, it was the place to be at that moment in time. And then I went back a second time later in the day with one of my other friends, and it was really chill, I gotta tell you. It was just that first few hours in the morning, maybe like that first two or three hours in the morning where they were really slammed. And then by the afternoon and evening of Friday and then Saturday and Sunday, there were people there, don't get me wrong, there were plenty of people shopping, but it wasn't as crazy as those first couple of hours were, especially at, at 10 o'clock when I first got there. There was no line on any of the other days, is basically what I'm saying. Although I will say, it was definitely worth it to get in line because the best plants, 
on that first day. So let me show you what I got. So the first plant that I got is one, I already have this, but it was such a good price and this was the only specimen they had that had four leaves. Every specimen they had had either two or three leaves tops. This was the only one that had four leaves and it was, I would say, the biggest or one of the bigger ones. And it is none other than an absolute classic, Anthurium warraquianum, also known as the Queen Anthurium. Look at that. Oh my god. I just, this is just one of those plants, like it never gets old. What I would call a timeless plant. I mean, I don't see this plant coming in and out of fashion. It's just always going to be beautiful. It's just a beautiful plant. The problem is not a lot of people have the best success with them because they are not very hardy at all. They like what they like, and if you can get that down, they're just like any other anthurium. And I have a few queens that I'm learning a lot from, and they're doing okay. This one definitely is the best looking one in my entire collection as of this moment. Hopefully it stays that way, <laughs> and maybe this plant will inspire my other queens to get their fucking shit together and look good. That's all I can say. Look at that leaf! Ooh! You know what I loved about this plant? Every leaf, if you can see, even though they're a little bit curled just because they, they've been bouncing around in a truck or whatever, look how each leaf, there's no browning or yellowing on the edges, there's no crispy tips. Every leaf is almost perfect. And that's what made me go, hmm, maybe this is a, like a good specimen. It's holding on to four leaves, all the leaves look great. I checked the roots, the roots look good, so you know what, I was like, fuck it, let me just get another queen because, how could I not? Like I said, I have a problem. By the way, guys, people might do this, I don't know, but if you have a plant that only puts out like one or two leaves for you, maybe, like, if you can, get a few of them. Because I feel like I want to take my queens that are not doing the best, maybe that put out one or two leaves at a time, and just take two or three of them and pop them together. Because even if you have a plant that puts out one or two leaves at a time and the rest kind of go to shit, you can still have a beautiful bushy plant all the way around depending on where the leaves come out. So, you know, so like this, it could look like one beautiful basket of a plant, but you know, it can be three plants in there putting out two leaves or something. So you could have like six leaves. You know, what I'm, am I making sense? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I think that's a cool idea. And if I ever do do that, I will make a video on it. I'll give you an update. Absolutely. Because I think it's a really cool idea. I think that's a really smart hack when it comes to queens or other aeroids or just any plants in general that maybe don't put out as many leaves as you want. Clump them up. You know, just saying. All right, so that is the first one. The second plant that I got is one of those tassel ferns. I'm pretty sure it's a tassel fern. There's so many different genera of tassel ferns, but everyone calls them tassel ferns. That's like the common name. This one here is called Lycopodium gobellii. That is the name right there, in case I mispronounced it. And here he is. Look at that! He is just a fabulous little tarantula, isn't he? Look at him just like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> I have way too much fun with my plants. It's pretty sickening, but look at that. He do Doesn't he look like a tarantula? I don't know. I think he does. He gives me tarantula vibes. Anyway, so I feel like if the Adams Family had a plant, they would have this. It'd be like a tarantula and it would like crawl around. <laughs> It'll be like a potted plant crawling around. It'll be like a spider. Anyway, guys, I digress. But these, when they get mature and they grow, they grow down, they cascade down, and these fronds, these leaves, whatever you want to call them, will just cascade down and they'll look beautiful. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I'll have to put it in a basket or something to let those things just drape down. Maybe I'll pot it with my paladiflorum up there so they can both drape down together. I don't know, but this will be my first tassel fern. Again, I say tassel fern as an umbrella term. I don't know if this is a real tassel fern or if this is some type of like thing that looks like a tassel fern. I don't know, I'm brand new to them and I'm actually gonna do some research on this particular species and this genus and see what they're all about because I love learning about the plants that I get. I love learning about the plants that I collect. I love learning about where they grow in the wild, where they come from, how if they're endemic to a certain area of the world. It gives me a, a better appreciation for them. And it also helps me care for them because I know what their conditions are in the wild. 
All right, so the third plant that I got on that morning of Friday, <laughs> on the first day, by the way, we're only in the morning, guys. Let's just, there's, there's round two in a second. But we have this one, which was the only plant that I was actually looking for, and I found it. And this is it right here. This is Philodendron Varicosum Amazon Sunset. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this plant, you might look at this and say, oh, well, it kind of looks like a Gloriosum or an El Choco Red. Look at the back of the leaf. Now, it's not quite coming off on camera, or maybe it's this bad light. I'll put in some B-roll just so you guys get the full effect, but look at that. It's an amazing lipstick red. It is so stunning, guys. Honestly, it's one of those things where you just can't capture it that well on camera. You just have to take my word for it, guys. You just gotta take my word for it. It is beautiful. Now. The reason why I went so many times is because, well, first of all, this place was so close to where I live, and I was like, if I have any free time during the weekend, which I did, why not? So I went as many times as I possibly could. But the main reason why is because they have a whole truck of plants, guys. Think about this for a second. They have a whole truck of plants. On the first day, that first morning, when it's crazy, they have all the plants, but they're, they're being sold. People are buying them, so they're going to run out they have to stock up on more. They got plants stashed away. Cause you might come on Friday morning and maybe they didn't put out the Amazon sunset, but then by Friday afternoon, it was in the back of the truck and they pulled it out because plants were being sold, tables were being cleared and they restocked and they brought out some new stuff. And if you didn't pre-order, then they wouldn't have gotten it for you. You know what I'm saying? This was the only one that they had that was not in a bag. All the Amazon sunsets that were in bags, they were yellow, leaves. It looked like fall, honey. It just looked like fall in the Northeast. Beautiful, but also heartbreaking. That's just imported plants for you guys. That's just imported plants. Uh, philodendron, really, when it comes down to it. So, I mean, I don't like to import philodendron. I don't like to even get them shipped to me if I can help it. I just don't, because I'm almost always rehabbing them in water. Very rarely do I ever get a philodendron that I don't have to rehab in water. So here's the interesting part, guys. Remember, we're still on Friday. I went there in the morning. I found this. I went back an hour before they closed, and I was taken aback at how much stock had changed. I walked in on the same day, just a few hours later, around five o'clock or so, because they closed at six, and I saw big, beautiful leaves. I saw flowering philodendron that I did not see that morning. Flat, you could buy a philodendron that was flowering. You could buy anthuriums that were flowering. I saw a lot of flowering crystallinum. Now, let me tell you guys, I don't know a lot of people that have their crystallinums flower. Um, so I think Egogenera just really, I think they give them some secret sauce or something. I think they have a little secret formula that makes them really horny. And <laughs> it's able to get them to produce seeds because they're wholesale. They're, they're a big greenhouse, essentially. I walked in and immediately I was like, wow, there's a lot of new leaves here that I wasn't seeing. A lot of new big leaves, a lot of strange boys that I didn't see in the morning. Had I not gone back, I would have left with only this. And I would not have left with this. This right here is another Amazon sunset. Look at the, oh, oh, I'm feeling a type of way right now. Okay, so here is El Choco Red, AKA Ruby Juvenile, I think is how you pronounce it. And then we have Amazon Sunset Viracosum. The leaves look, Similar, I would say the Amazon Sunset looks a lot more like a Gloriosum Verde, but let's compare the back because that is where the show is, guys. Look at that. Quite the difference, guys. Quite the difference when you compare the two. And I believe this one stays red. So as you can see, these older leaves, it is still holding on to the red. Look how vibrant that is. Hoo hoo! This guy has three leaves. The root system looks pretty stinking good. Not gonna lie, when I looked inside, let me get this guy out of the way. You're done, sir. Go back to bed. So there he is right there. And this is why I went multiple times. The next day I went, guys, I wasn't sure, am I gonna see different stuff? Am I gonna see the same stuff? I would say for the most part, I saw the same stuff that was just 
there from the previous evening. So what was left on Friday evening when they closed was pretty much what they had on Saturday. I did find another varicosum. Now there are so many types of varicosum. I, I'm, I'm kind of on a varicosum kick. I kind of want to collect them all a little bit. He's similar, but also different. Let's see if it comes off on camera. So this one was labeled as varicosum dark. And he's not the sexiest plant, but he had a lot of aerial roots and a lot of nodes and the root system looked really good. So I'm like, you know what? I can propagate you and air layer you and you're gonna look cute in a few months. But this is the mess. As you can see, he is a total vine. I have him air layered over here because there was a lot of juicy roots up here that I wanna catch. I'm gonna propagate this in a few weeks once this takes and the roots in here are really, really good. So I'm gonna cut this back and then this will be its own plant and then I'll propagate these nodes in here as well. But I just wanna show you. So compared to the Amazon Sunset, this one has much more pronounced green veins, as you can see. And also unlike the Amazon Sunset, at least the specimen I have, where it appears to keep its color, this one, like a lot of arrows, the color does fade over time. So that older leaf there, is not quite as red, but the new leaves will come in this red and actually a little bit redder because even this one's starting to fade a little bit. Here is another form of varicosum. It's small just because I let it trail. I prefer to let them trail. That's just uh, what I like. I think they look really cool. They take on a whole different character and I actually want to do a video of how I hang my fillows, like hashtag hang your fillows, guys. I mean, look at this. Isn't this so cool? So yes, this is a different type of varicosum, but that is what the front leaf looks like. Really, really cool veins. And then this is what the back of the leaf looks like. Really awesome patterning there. And if we look at the older leaves, they definitely fade over time. This one is almost all green. Has the signature furry petiole, like a lot of the varicosum and varicosum types do. I believe that is for insects because these have such thin leaves and they are so susceptible to insects, spider mice, things like that. I believe it is to keep insects at bay so that it's harder for them to crawl up their stems. I forget where I heard that, but that is what I heard. Okay. Next plant that I got on the second day, remember this is Saturday, I got something that I just got rid of. So I had a crystallinum that was a bush, and it was great. It had leaves about the size of my hand. Nice bush, but I was like, yeah, I got some other things that look similar. I just thought it would be better in somebody else's collection, so I, I, I gave it up. Um, I sold it literally not even a few weeks, not even, what, two weeks ago? And I got another one. This guy is Mr. Buff. Look at this right here. Look, hold on. Hold on. I don't know if it's gonna come off on camera, but this thing is buff. It is, do you see how it's three dimensional? Do you see how the veins are indented and there's bulbous parts of the leaf here in between? And also look at this leaf. First of all, look how dark and sexy it is. Look how those veins pop, oh my god. And it's got a little, little sport variegation right there. Isn't that cool? But look at that leaf, oh my god. It has two growth points, which is awesome. This plant is sizing up like it's on freaking steroids. I'm just gonna keep it in the mix that it's in. Maybe it has, it looks like it has some slow release fertilizer in it, so maybe it'll work its magic in flower. You never know. It does have a new gro uh, growth plant coming in, in there, as you guys might be able to see. But yes, I'm, I'm back with the crystallinum, guys. I mean, because here's the thing. They had other crystallinums there, but they were all flat leaf. And they were just as beautiful as any other crystallinum, but this one was, like, bulbous. It's one of those things in person where it's like, Ugh! Anyway, so, yes, that's what I got on day two. Whew, all right, and on the last day, the third and last day, which was today, Sunday, I went with my friend, again, I went with a few different people, and uh, on, on, you know, the different times that I went, and I decided to get a little mini orchid, a little mini dendrobium to put in my terrarium. I will add some B-roll here. He has a flower that is about to open with a bud coming in. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? He's just a little cutie. 
So yes, he is going to be my terrarium. So those are all my plants. That was my Equigenera plant haul. First time they came to Manhattan, it was so awesome. And before I close out this video, I just wanted to say how awesome it was to meet people there or to see people that I maybe sold a plant to or that we did a trade with at some point recently or maybe like so there were some people that recognized me from Instagram which I thought was kind of funny. I felt like a celebrity for like a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was somebody who literally came up to me and was like, oh, I, I, I recognize you from Instagram, but I didn't want to, like, come up to you and say hi and be weird. I was like, girl, I'm not a celebrity, just, just come up to me, okay? <laughs> but yeah, every time I went, I either recognized somebody or somebody recognized me or I knew somebody. So yeah, it was just really cool to get a feel for how tight-knit and how close the plant community in Manhattan, or even in the five boroughs, because there were people that came from all the boroughs and, and, and beyond. It was really cool to be reminded that even in a giant city like New York, the plant community is so, it's not small, but it's small enough where people just kind of know each other a little bit better, almost like it's a small town, or like a club or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Maybe I'm just that crazy and memorable. <laughs> that's why I call myself the mess because I'm literally a mess and I turn the AC off and so that's why I'm sweating. I don't just sweat like this all the time, I promise. It's just 80 degrees in here when the AC is off, so. It's summer, guys. It is what it is. But uh, I ain't complaining because I'm here with you guys. I have all my new plants here. They're all fabulous. I'm so happy that Equigenera finally came to Manhattan. Hopefully they come back next year and I can spend more damn money because what's I gonna do sit in my bank account? I also keep track of the money that I spend uh, throughout the month. I keep it on my calendar, on my fridge, and I keep track because I want to make sure that I make that money back or at least most of it back. Obviously, we can spend money on plants, you know, every now and again, but if you're spending a few hundred dollars a month, you want to make that money back or you want to slow down for sure. In total, I have to make a few hundred bucks back and, you know, I have some elbows and some things here and there that I'm air layering that I will cut in a few weeks, so I'll make it back. So I'm not worried about that at all, but I just splurged and I love bringing in new plants, letting some plants go, taking some cuttings for myself and just expanding my collection to other people's collections. I think that is one of the coolest parts about growing plants and collecting plants is that when you propagate them, you can share your specimen with somebody else, but you can still have it if you take a cutting for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's all I gotta say, guys. I'm gonna go turn on that AC again and just relax. My friend's gonna come over a little bit. Uh, he's dropping off a, uh, a cool plant that I'll probably put in the next video or a, a future video for like some cool oddballs. Maybe I'll do like a little plant haul or something. Uh, he's cool. I, I found him locally. Anyway, so I'm gonna go. So have a great night, great morning, whenever you're watching this, great day. And I'll catch you guys in the next video and I'll see you on Instagram. Thank you for watching this mess. Once again, my name is Jake and Zara, plant gay for life, all that good shit. If you dig me, like and subscribe and interact with the video, recommend it to people if you thought it was entertaining. Um, if you went to Equigenera, let me know. If you saw me at Equigenera, let me know. Uh, it's, it's even in the Big Apple, it, the, the plant community is just so close and it just feels so small and so tight knit and, uh, and not so big and crazy and I love it. it. I love it. So anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. So have a great night, guys. Again, I'm saying it for the second time, but really, have a great night. I'm going to turn the camera off. All right, goodbye. <laughs>